Hi, this is Jay Haynes with the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to continue the discussion of 3D text in HitFilm Express. All right, so this is sort of part two from last Monday's video, and I will leave a link in the description to last Monday's video so you can sort of see what we're doing. Uh, but again, we are sort of, at, like I said last time, sort of making a fake 3D text. It's not pure three-dimensional, but it looks really good. Uh, and I'm going to add a little bit of a trick in today to allow you to rotate and turn that three-dimensional text um fairly well in this shot. So I'm going to start by sort of replicating what I did last time. I'm going to do a new composite shot. I'm going to call this the text placeholder. And in the text placeholder, I'm going to add a new text layer. And while I'm doing this, I'm just going to tell you that if you have trouble with this or you don't uh, know how to do this, then probably what you want to do is you want to go back and watch the other video uh, that I had made earlier uh, last week. And I, like I said, I will definitely leave a link in the description below. So here's my text placeholder. I'm going to make a new composite shot. And this is going to be my texture placeholder. And again, I this time, last time I actually used a texture. This time I'm just going to generate one. I will make a plane add a fractal noise effect to it. And I'm just going to, uh, let's go with uh, green marble. Let's go with green marble today, okay? So there's my texture placeholder. So now I'm going to create a new, another third composite shot. I'm gonna call this baked text. Uh, baked text, this will have the baked text and texture together. So I'm gonna bring both of these in. The text placeholder I'm gonna make uh, invisible, but I'm going to use a set mat effect and I am put that on the texture placeholder and I will source the text. So now that the, the, it's just the texture inside the actual text. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to make a new composite shot. This will be my final shot. Click okay. And I'm going to bring in my baked text. Okay, and then I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it and I'm going to rename that the extrusion or the 3D extrusion and I'm going to go ahead and make both of these three dimensional. Yes, we're going to add a plane. Okay, and again, I'm going to just like I did before, I'm going to make a new point, a three dimensional point. I'm going to call this the text control point and I am going to parent both of the uh, bake text and the 3D extrusion to that. So that way, if I move or rotate it around, it will rotate around both of them well. Okay, let's go ahead and do the extrusion. As you may remember last time, I use a zoom blur effect and I put it in the 3D extrusion. I'm going to open it up and I drew it to the negative. Um, let's make it negative 15 today. Last time I think I made it negative 20. All right, last time I used a neon glow effect. This time I'm going to use a crush blacks and whites alpha. It will essentially do the same thing. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to leave the transparent at zero, but I'm going to take the opaque down to 0 0.01. Okay, and that is it. All right, now if I want to make that darker, change the color, I can. I can use a tint effect. I can use a brightness and contrast effect. It doesn't really matter, okay? Um, but basically, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to go ahead and add a light to the scene this time. We did not do that last time, but that will create a little bit more of a realistic looking scene here. Okay. And I want to add a parallax effect to the baked text. And if I open it up, I'm going to invert it and maybe draw it down a little bit, maybe 10, maybe 20, you know, something like that. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Okay. But check this out. If I move this or rotate it, the texture really starts to look bad right away, right? The, the extrusion of it. Okay. That's because if you go into the zoom blur, of the 3D extrusion and you open up center, you will see that there is a point, okay? And that point is essentially where the 3D 
or where the zoom is pointing, therefore where the extrusion that I have created points, okay? Which means that you can do an awful lot of cool things with that. And here's what I am going to do. I am going to create a new point layer, making it three-dimensional, and I'm going to call this the extrusion pointer, okay? And I am going to have that 3D extrusion, the zoom blur, point at that 3D extrusion pointer. Now, if I turn the text, I want the extrusion pointer to move also. So what I'm going to do, and this is the secret now, is that I'm going to throw this out in space a long ways, like negative 50,000, okay? Way out there, oh, 50,000, not 500,000, although 500,000 probably work also. Okay, and then I'm going to parent it to the new the text control point. Now, if I get a perspective here, I'll back up here a little bit, and if I just sort of rotate it around, you can see that the point is way back there, yes? And as if I were to open up the text control and just sort of rotate it, you can see that the point moves too, which means that the zoom blur is pointing that way, which means that the extrusion will point that way. Now, it will break down because it's all drawn on a plane, right? And so if you turn the plane all the way to 90 degrees, it's going to be too much. But if I go back to my active camera and I rotate this, you can see that it's fairly good, okay? And in this case, I think we can probably get all the way up to about 60 degrees or so, maybe even more. Only when the edge of that plane starts to reach the, you know, see how it's reached there and now it's, uh, you know, it's sort of not looking right. But you can go pretty far with that, okay? At the same time, you can, of course, move it forwards and backwards, right? You can, you know, do whatever you want with it, right? So you get a pretty good look at that, right? So um, let me go back to here. I'm going to kind of create a snorry rig almost for my camera. I'm going to create a new point and 3D plane. I'm going to call this point the camera control point, and I'm just going to parent my camera to it. So now if I move this camera control point, then the camera starts circling around uh, instead of the, uh, the text. Um, so let's say, for instance, I wanted to... Uh, where's my texture placeholder? I'm just going to drop this in. I'm going to call this the floor. Okay, make it into a 3D plane, and I'm just going to um, rotate it 90 degrees. And if I grab it and draw it down just a little bit, maybe make it bigger. Okay. Um, it's about there. I can adjust the um, material properties. Uh, you know, maybe bring down the um, specular of it a little bit here, right? So now, if I were to adjust the camera, ro you know, sort of rotating the camera around, you can see that I have a fairly realistic three-dimensional um, texture there, right? And like I said, I might want to make that a little bit darker in the back. I could use a tint or a... Uh, you know, a uh, brightness and contrast, uh, even a fill color kind of a thing. You just want to play with that, right? But the secret to this whole thing is in this extrusion pointer, which is way back there. If you parent that to the 3D text and you throw it way back 50,000 pixels or something, the 3D text control point, then as that the 3D text moves, the pointer will move and it will continue to let the extrusion point in the right direction. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Next time I'm going to talk about the new 3D and bevel techniques that are in the newest version of HitFilm Pro version 7. Thanks for watching.